In this video, we'll be looking at the output options available through Carlson Road Network. We'll be running Carlson 2012 running on IntelliCAD 7.1. Road Network is found on the Roads menu in Carlson Civil, also found in Carlson Construction and Carlson Takeoff. We'll go ahead and click on Road Network and it loads our dock dialog box. You can see we have existing roads already defined along with intersections and a variety of cul-de-sacs. To access the output options we go to the settings and then move to the output options tab. You can see a variety of these have been selected here. The first is triangulate and contour. This is where we would go to set up to make a surface model of our finished grade road. We do this by making sure we've toggled on right triangulation file and browsing out and giving that triangulation file a name. In addition to that you can also draw triangulation lines. You can draw triangle faces and slope arrows. One unique feature of road network triangulate and contour is when you draw the triangles you have the option to set color layers. This will look at define templates and allow you to use each of the ID points on your template and assign a color to that so that the triangle faces come in multicolored based on your template IDs. You can also color code by cut fill depth and you can use the grade name to suffix the layer so that we would attach these to the layers for those triangles. You can also merge that existing ground tin that was defined under process options back here. Merge that existing ground with the road tin being created directly above it. If you're not creating a tin the merge road with existing will be grayed out. In addition to merging those files, and again all we do here is define the name for that tin, we can write out a ServeCE stakeout file. ServeCE is Carlson's premier field survey software. The ServeCE stakeout file would include all of the center lines, curb returns, profiles, sections for all of the roadways in your road network making it extremely convenient to stake any aspect of any of the roads. Again here when we click set we simply give the file a name. This file can then be uploaded directly to your ServeCE controller. The next two options are grayed out, draw template polylines, and draw disturbed areas. These things are done automatically when you triangulate and contour your road surface. The template polylines are linear lines that you can see in the background here connecting the template ID points. The disturbed area is the boundary or limit of your design and it creates a closed polyline around that area. A number of these options that are using layers can be controlled through the set layers button and we will look at that a little bit later. Drawing subgrade polylines takes the subgrade points from your template and allows us to draw polylines similar to the template polylines, but for your subgrades. When toggled on, select IDs to draw is activated. The asterisk will draw all subgrade IDs. If you click select, you get a preview of your section and you can select specific IDs that you want drawn. By toggling these on, you can see the yellow X moves to the vertex that I'm having drawn. So I can ensure that I draw, for instance, just my subgrade by picking the appropriate points, and then I have that surface that I can create using those specific uh, subgrade polylines. We'll go ahead and leave that set to all draw template slopes. Again using the template IDs to draw you can be specific or you can adjust those. The template slopes refer to the slope on your template. 
and that information is then drawn in your plan drawing so that you can see that information as resultant from your design. This can be particularly helpful when doing things like super elevation. Cross section slopes is looking at your cross section and again like template slopes and subgrades you can specify the IDs. Here it's looking specifically for your catch slope or your tie slope to the existing ground. Cross section polylines will show you the location of each cross section going across your roadways. Draw cut fill arrows will draw arrows and I have some in the drawing here we can zoom in and look at once we're done with our dialog box but it draws arrows that indicate whether the catch slope is in a cut or fill condition you can control the arrow size and whether or not the arrow is filled and again we will look at these profile label on centerline will label specific profile key points such as PVIs high points and low points along your center line so that you have that information in plan view, view as well as profile view. In looking at this I should also point out as you add these you highlight click add if you double click them you have access to the CAD information layers that it should go to, how it is prefixed, what textile is being used, decimal precision and so on. simply add those two here and when you're done go ahead and click OK. You may also click setup in lieu of double clicking to access the CAD settings for the highlighted used label. Output coordinates will write a coordinate file that again can be used for stakeout. These coordinates that are written out are key coordinates. It uh, writes out to a CRD file and it's the critical points on your roadway. So once we click on output we can go to setup and identify which of these key points we want to have included in that coordinate file output along with the template IDs. So we can do things like select our center line, our catch points, our flow lines and have those points included. Output EOP profiles will output the edge of pavement profiles as additional profiles to your center line profile. These are required in some jurisdictions as part of the plan and profile sheets and this is a very convenient way to get that additional information. Elevate pads will take specific pads that were created as part of lot network or pads created on a specific layer and the way this works is you specify a template ID you want to follow such as our edge of pavement. We're going to raise the elements that are on this pad layer as long as they are within 100 feet of the edge of pavement. You have options as to whether to use the lowest, the middle, or the highest elevation, assuming that our edge of pavement as it moves along our pad area is changing elevation and not perfectly flat. We then set percent slopes working from our edge of pavement coming back for cut and fill so it knows how high to raise that or lower it from the roadway we can assign a new layer for the new pad and if we choose to do that we can determine whether we wish to retain the original pad at elevation zero. Combining elevate pads with elevate lots gives you the information that is typically required to create uh, a surface for overlot grading. The elevate lots similar to elevate pads is looking at 2D lot information. These would be the lot lines. So it needs to know what layer those are on, what layer you want the new 3D lines to go to. The front to reference max offset 
so how far off the front of the lot to look for lot lines, and the back offset. How far back should it go along a lot line? A key feature to this process, in addition to specifying the template ID, is the grading rules. If you have standard grading rules that have been previously recorded, you can simply select that file. Files for grading rules will have a GRR extension. If you don't have an existing file, you can click Edit and create a set of grading rules for how to handle lot grading along the lot lines from the selected template ID to the back of the lot for both cut and fill conditions. Once these rules are established, then you're ready to go ahead and elevate your lots. In both cases, these two commands will create 3D polylines elevated that can then be used to create a surface along with your template polylines for your overall site. Good way to get a head start on grading your site. So we can also set layers. We mentioned this a little bit earlier. So our template polylines, layer they go to, along with our subgrade polylines, our slope labels, section slope labels, section polyline layers, and the disturbed area. Again, template polylines and disturbed areas are turned on by default when we triangulate and contour our existing ground surface. Set slopes tells us how we want the various slopes labeled as percentages, decimals we want to have, as well as do we want to draw slope arrows and should they be going downhill or uphill or in the direction of your road. Finally, additional output files that we can create. A number of these are helpful to have turned on prior to adding roads. What these will do is create uh, a default file for existing sections, final cross sections, existing profiles, rock sections if you have rock defined for your uh, roadway, intersection profiles, and intersection centerline files. The intersection centerline and profiles are running around the curb returns. So by toggling all of these on as I add roads, these suffixes are added automatically to layer names so that they're ready to be utilized as soon as I process the design. If I toggle them on after I've added roadways, I will need to add those file names manually at each road. So this is a good one to turn on prior to processing your road. So we'll zoom in real quick here take a look at some of this information. Here's our road slopes, template slopes through here. Here are the slope arrows, in this case showing fill and over here cut, and you can see that we opted to have them filled in in this case. We have not drawn the uh, cross-section polylines here. But as long as we're running a little over time anyway, we'll see how many of these we can do here. Cross sections, polylines, there we go. And we will process our road design. and the process is complete. You can see we have triangles in our drawing representing our road surface. If we zoom in a little bit you can even see we have different colors for the curb and gutter and for our catch lines. Our highlighted roadway all ready to be output to a final design. If you have additional questions, feel free to contact Carlson Software. Hopefully this gives you a better handle on the output options provided to you through Carlson Road Network.